Welcome back to the another great episode of SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Here we are breaking down the great statistical analysis software known as SPSS. So in our first video, we learned how to create basic variables in SPSS and save our data file. And all of it was done in SPSS itself. But what do you do when your data is in Excel? It's not uncommon in today's academic world to collect data using Excel. In fact, most researchers prefer Excel over other tools because Excel is a great data manipulator. For this, we import the Excel file in SPSS for analysis. So that's what we are going to do in this video. Without further ado, let's jump right in to the second episode of SPSS Masterclass for Beginners. Hey guys, my name is Shardul, hailing from Shavash Tutorials and creator of shavash.co.in. I am also a junior research fellow at Indian Institute of Information Technology, Allahabad. Before we begin the masterclass, if you are interested in any tech product, software or language, be it for coding or research purposes, then be sure to subscribe by clicking the red subscribe button on this channel and also the bell icon next to it so that you never miss an episode. Also. There is a whole playlist of the masterclass in the description so that you can go to the other videos when you are done with this one. So let's begin. Now if you are here from the first video, I hope that you have SPSS installed in your laptop and you are ready to go for this work itself. But if you don't, please pause the video and go back to the link that has been given in the description and download and install the trial version of SPSS from their official website. On my screen though, as I move to the first sheet that I have, I have a set of fictitious data on a spreadsheet and I have deliberately placed some common errors in the data that I usually see working with data sets on a regular basis. You can download the data set from our description so that you can follow along with me as I perform these steps. So let's first look at the data structure. As we can see, the first correct thing about this data is that all data is segregated by variables in each columns. One, two, this, these are all variables and have each variables segregated by every data set. And all the participants are in the row. This is how usually data is structured before importing it to SPSS to avoid any weird confusions. You also must make sure that the variable name is written on the top of the first cell of each columns. Now the first variable is ID, depicting the identification of the participants. This shows that we have 15 participants in our data. Normally, this ID is followed by first and last name of the participants along with other identifying information. But since we don't have them, this shows that the identifying information was not the core focus of the data. It is usually a good exercise to remove the variables that are not a focus of your study as they distract your analysis from its core focus. But be sure to make a copy of the original workbook or you will lose some information that might be necessary in post analysis and you might not be able to match your ID with other identifying information if you need to. I had to learn it the hard way. It's always better to be safe and sorry. The next variable is gender. And it's important to see that the values here are strings. But as you remember from the last video, you would want to change the code of these strings from 1 and 2 or 0 and 1 for male and female. It is a good exercise to code your data prior to importing to SPSS. We do that by selecting all the values in the column that, like I have done and then going to find and replace or find and select in this case and then going to replace and then going to the find and replace or you can press Ctrl H 
for a keyboard shortcut. Now here one important thing to remember is that you have to change female first. As if you change the male first, the term female in the column becomes C0 which is troublesome. So if you type in male like I'm doing here and you replace it with zero and if you press replace all it says all done we have made 15 replacements but female has become C0 as Excel has automatically replaced all the male strings to zero including the male string in the female word so here I have to undo the weird change so what I'll do is I'll cancel it and press ctrl Z or you can click from here undo and it will undo and then I will go back to find and select then go to replace and instead of changing male first I'll change female and then I'll replace all with zero so now Excel has automatically changed and it says that Excel has made eight replacements now you can change male without any error you replace male with one and press replace all now the Excel automatically says all done we have made seven replacements so this is usually a good exercise also remember this coding for SPSS values column that we have done in the first episode the next is the date of joining you can see that all the dates that are given in this column are quite close to each other but on careful examination you can see that there is a date that is over 10 years older than the other this likely looks like a mistake in this data set so we are going to correct that by changing the correct year of the participants we do that by double clicking on the cell and changing the year correct now all looks fine in this column then we have the CGPA of the participants now here can be seen that there is a missing entry in the column which must be removed to a blank cell don't worry if you have a missing information in your data set SPSS has a way of dealing with missing data points that we will discuss in the future classes looking at the marks of the participants we see that there is a high score written at 85 marks even though 85 is the high score we don't actually want that in our data so we correct it so that it matches to the rest of our scores we double click and we delete high score similarly 60 is spelled in string rather than numeric so we change it by six zero then there was an absent candidate which is without a score we might want this information but not for this analysis and hence we delete it and leave it as a missing value these information or any comment about a candidate's performance is put in an additional column as remarks or attendance. Then there could be an ordinal entry like this in the interval data which does not actually tell what the score really is. So in a real life data you try and find the score and put it in the place otherwise you just delete the ordinal data. Let's say that in this case, the score was identified as 31. So we replace it with the value. Then there is a value with decimal places in a data set of no decimal value. 
Now it is important to remember that in SPSS this would not be a problem and it would be okay and it will do all the analysis you want but this unusual data would make for an unusual output and hence probably a wrong interpretation of it would be done by the person who is doing the analysis. So the best way to do it correctly is round the values here to 60 cell. Now these data are now configured correctly to import into SPSS. Now we save the workbook to our place of choice. To that we go to file, we go to save as, then we find our folder. This is our folder. Here I already have a copy of Excel data named episode 2 excel data but you won't have it so you type episode 2 excel data and in save as type you select excel workbook and you press save in this case because it already exits it will ask that do i want to replace it it won't do on yours I'll just press yes. So now our data is saved. Now this is important before going to SPSS that you close the workbook before beginning to import to SPSS. SPSS won't let you open a file if it is already open elsewhere. So we close our. So now first we've opened SPSS. In SPSS, open your data set by going to file then open then date now take yourself to the place where you have saved your data file you don't see the excel file do you because spss is looking for sav zsav file so we change the file types to Excel. Now your episode 2 Excel data is visible. If you are opening some other type of data format like text, CSV or anything else, this is where you choose your file type. Now we click open. But we are not done yet because a screen should show up in any moment. Yes, in this screen. In the next video that has shown up, we have some options to choose. So first change that we need is we have to check read variable names from the first row of data because that is what we have. In the worksheet, we choose sheet one. If you have other sheets of data, it will show up but since we have only sheet 1 we choose sheet 1 now we click ok now the data set as you can see has opened we first go to variable view now you got to change your other informations of the data we have covered the details in our first video so i'll just jump cut to the completed variable view now that our changes are done let's save our spss file we've done that in our previous video so i won't go into much detail you can go back to our video and see how that is done we name this file as So to data, we'll select SPSS statistics.sav and we press save. Now if we go to our folder, we can see that two new files are made. That is Excel 2 episode data and episode 2 
SPSS data. One is an Excel file and another is an SPSS file. You can of course save it with whatever name you want. So yeah, that's how it is done. So that right there is how you prepare your data for analysis and import Excel file to SPSS. In the next video, we will run elementary analysis and will store the output file for interpretation. If you enjoyed it, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so that you do not miss the next video of the SPSS Masterclass series. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode of the Masterclass series.